Good evening to this press conference from the 48th annual meeting here in Davos. Um, we're very pleased to welcome you here this evening on the evening of the third day of this annual meeting already. And we're particularly pleased and honored to be joined uh, by um, the Prime Minister of Pakistan, Shahid Khakan Abbasi. And uh, he's bringing with him a very senior uh, delegation of uh, cabinet ministers and uh, a member of the National um, um, Assembly. To my, in addition to uh, the Prime Minister, we're joined by my immediate left by uh, the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Pakistan, Mr. Khwaja Mohammed Asif. I think, I hope I pronounced this correctly. Very yeah. Very to the left of the Prime Minister, we're joined by Saira Afsal Tarar, the Minister for National Health Services, Regulations and Coordination of Pakistan. Next to her, we're pleased to be joined by Anusha Rahman Khan, the Minister of State for Information Technology and Telecommunications. Welcome. We're also joined by Mariam Aurangzeb, the Minister of State for Information Broadcasting and National Heritage. And last but definitely not least, we're joined by Shaza Kwaja, uh, a member of the National Assembly, as mentioned. Thank you very much for being here in the room with us. Thank you very much for watching, whether you're watching on television, on our website, on Facebook or Periscope, you're very welcome. Prime Minister, without further ado, we'd like to hand the word over to you and hear from you uh, thoughts and your perspective on the theme of the meeting, creating a shared future in a fractured world, and share with the members of the media also an update from Pakistan, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Schmidt. Our decision to attend the WEF an annual meeting was motivated by this year's theme, Shared Future in a Fractured World. This theme rings true for all our initiatives, whether peace and security, economic, social or international. In Pakistan, we are carving out a shared future and leaving no one behind. While faced with fractures internally and externally, Pakistan is at the cusp of making history by making a peaceful transition while completing a decade of successive democracy. We have a strong narrative and there is no better platform than the World Economic Forum to showcase the role Pakistan will be playing in connecting people and regions through the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, which is today the visible part of the Belt and Road Initiative. The WEF has facilitated us to project our emerging economy, forging strategic alliances and social empowerment initiatives in line with sustainable development goals. During the WEF, we engaged with business leaders from the financial, telecom, energy, automotive, technology, and healthcare sectors. This forum allowed us to project Pakistan's true potential and have productive discussions. We are very confident that these engagements will help us generate billions of dollars of business potential in Pakistan. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister. Um, we will now have some time uh, for questions uh, from the audience. If you would kindly indicate uh, uh, if you have a question by raising your hand. We have a microphone here for the sake of our online audience, please. Yes. The lady in the middle, if you yes. could get the microphone over there. If you could state your name and organization, please. Can I use this one? No, please use the other one. So. Um, all our audience can hear your question. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you, min uh, uh, Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. I'm from uh, China Central Television. Um, my question is about you know that uh, the theme of this year's Davos is to create a shared future uh, in a fractured world, which is quite similar to Mr. President Xi Jinping has made last year here, and. Uh, um, uh, my question is about uh, what is your understanding of a uh, shared future, and would you like to comment on China's effort to create a shared future? Thank you. Uh, Thank you very we much. We have highlighted uh, uh, China's and, pre and President Xi's vision at every forum here, and what we have said is uh, very clearly that China has taken uh, the historical linkages 
transpose them onto the current fractures and created linkages for the future. And I think this is uh, the, uh, the BRI initiative is something uh, that will benefit the region and the world at large for uh, decades and, and, uh, and probably millenniums to come. Thank you very much. Would any uh, other panelists like to add to that? Oh, well, uh, the initiative, the Chinese initiative, uh, especially in a region which is which is uh, politically and otherwise fractured, is something which uh, shows or uh, manifests China's commitment to really strive for a shared future. Uh, whereas uh, elsewhere in Middle East and uh, uh, some of other regions on the globe. Uh, there, there is absolutely no effort uh, for for uh, uh, building of uh, a shared future, and the world remains fractured, fractured economically, poverty, uh, lack of connectivity, and uh, the conflict uh, zones, especially the conflict areas where um, uh, the, the world is, uh, um, you know, especially the refugee crisis. And some of uh, the issues which are uh, very close to um, to Pakistan also and uh, other countries of our region, uh, like uh, Palestine, like uh, Kashmir, like uh, the Rohingyas. Uh, so the, these are uh, uh, the reasons or uh, these are the causes of uh, a fractured world, which is not being uh, covered or which is not being, which is really hampering uh, the sharing of uh, uh, the common future. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, we have a question from the gentleman on the left. The microphone is on its way. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, appropriately, uh, first a question from the Chinese and now a question from the Americans. Uh, and I, I guess it's in the nature of Pakistan, its geography, that you're always pulled in different directions. I suppose my question is, uh, do you feel the warmth of friendship more from the East or more from the West? And how, sir, do you balance your relationship with America with your relationship with the Chinese and other partners in your region? Thank you very much. If you could also, for the sake of our online audience, state your name and organization. It's uh, Keir Simmons from NBC News. Thank you very much. We are a country where warm winds blow both from the east and the west. <laughs> and they've been uh, blowing for the last 70 years. So we hope that uh, the warm winds will continue to blow. We have a long uh, relationship uh, with uh, China, and we have a long relationship with the US. And both relations are, are important to us. So uh, that is the way we view these relationships. And we want to continue those relationships. The relationship with China has further strengthened over time, especially with the CPAC and the BRI, of which uh, Pakistan is a large part. So uh, and it's open to uh, other countries in the region will greatly benefit from the CPAC and the BRI. So we are not only providing connectivity for Pakistan and China, we're providing connectivity for the region also. Thank you very much. Please, by all means. Well, as uh, the Prime Minister said that uh, these two relationships uh, are um, as old as our country. Uh, we uh, do not maintain relationship, uh, relationships uh, like, for instance, our relationship with China is not at the expense of U.S. or our relationship with U.S. is not at the expense of Chinese, Chinese relationship. Uh, and we would like uh, our friends to uh, view th their relationship with us, with Pakistan, as an independent relationship and not through the prism of a third country. I'm referring to our relationship with the United States. They have uh, recently, or since last few years, viewing uh, their relationship with us through the prism of Afghanistan. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we had questions about China, about the US. Uh, let's hear a little bit more about uh, Pakistan itself, actually. Uh, Prime Minister, in your opening remarks, you also mentioned uh, energy, you mentioned innovation, uh, technology. Um, maybe you and, and members of your cabinet would like to share some perspective on that. Um, and what's the outlook for Pakistan in these areas, please? Do you want to share something on the IT? Yeah, sure. How we are, how it's changing lives, how it's connecting uh, uh, people? 
Uh, thank you, Prime Minister. Uh, uh, as, as far as the IT is concerned, uh, Pakistan has come from less than 3% uh, of broadband connectivity in 2013, crossing 37% of the population which is using mobile phones connected with now with 3G. And the Prime Minister has given the vision to have the broadband like air, which means that now that we are 80% in the coverage area, we will be connecting 100% of the unconnected territories. So uh, we have spent something like $400 million in the last four years on connecting the unconnected in the far-flung areas of the country. And once the infrastructure is complete by December 2018, the supply side, uh, once having dealt, being dealt with, we are now also focusing on the demand side of the technology, which is providing uh, training in digital skills, which is we are now training one million young population with digital skills, uh, launching the e-commerce platform, the full value chain, and bringing about 50,000 artisans online, the ICT for Girls program, teaching girls how to do coding and cloud computing. At this point in time, 146,000 girls in Islamabad and in the Betul Mals, women empowerment centers, are on the learning trajectory, learning how to do coding and cloud computing uh, uh, in partnership with Microsoft. At the same time, uh, uh, the Ministry of IT and the species of the Prime Minister of Pakistan is the minister in charge, are, uh, have launched incubation centers, providing 100,000 square feet of space for startups. Uh, three incubation centers are already launched, and two are in the making, and maybe we'll be launching those startup incubation centers. And the children are taking the technology innovation to the world through these platforms. So we believe that technology is the way forward. The use of technology on the demand side is something that we are now emphasizing on. We feel that these are the ways and means of giving employment opportunities to young children. Uh, we are number, react number fourth in freelancing, and we aspire to become number one. So the digital skill programs that we have launched is actually going towards pa taking Pakistan as number one in freelancing. So all these projects with setting up of the uh, different types of activities on the demand side, technology parks, giving additional attention uh, to the IT sector, the Pakistan software exports have increased from uh, $300 million in 2013 under the PMLN governance has gone up to $3.3 billion in the last four years. So we have actually got a 100% increase in the software exports targeting around $10 billion by 2020. So these initiatives are all on the trajectory. Pakistan is a, it's a huge market for, uh, we, are, we produce about 20,000 young IT professionals every year. Uh, we are looking at bridging the industry academia gap by providing them additional training. We are looking at more human resource capital deployed for the world for the software export. So Pakistan is a good market uh, to look into our average dollar rate uh, per hour is about $15, whereas the world is offering at $30. So these are the things that makes Pakistan a very attractive market for all of you to do business with us. We Thank you. Address the social sectors and especially in the healthcare, we've taken some major initiatives which target uh, uh, the provision of uh, quality health care for the poorest of the poor. So, uh, Mrs. Uh, Sarah Tarar, the health, uh, Minister for Health, will uh, explain that. Thank you, Prime Minister. I think like any other developing country, the health indicators of Pakistan are not as encouraging. And I always say that, unfortunately, in developing countries, the Ministry of Health used to be and are still donor driven. So the first step which the present government has taken is that we introduce the largest social sector program in health sector, that is Prime Minister National Health Program. It is covering almost millions of family and the data which we have collected, that is from a base which is, uh, we have done through a poverty survey and it is for the people who earn less than $2 a day. And through this uh, program, you know, you won't believe that this is a pro-women program. The first lot which you get in this program was 70% of the women. So this increased our uh, scaled birth, this increased our primary health coverage, and I think health is a devolved subject in Pakistan. There was a constitution amendment of, and after that, but this program really is a game changer. Our routine immunization, that was another challenge which Pakistan was facing. And we are one of the biggest recipient of Gavi also. But this time, Gavi, uh, uh, we called by a Gavi board, 
to present our case in front of other uh, beneficiaries. And now our routine immunization, it exceeds from 50% to 80%. And with little intervention, we provide Android phone to our vaccinator and through mechanism which we develop. I think in a country like Pakistan, if we improve governance and monitoring and make people accountable for what they do, we can do a major shift. Another thing, you know that we are suffering, unfortunately, from we are among those countries still from polio. But what we have done in last four years is remarkable. All our international partners and even the IMB Bo, which is the highest forum appreciated Pakistan, and now we are, have only eight cases. Uh, our major challenge in polio eradication is cross-border virus coming from Afghanistan and from Pakistan going to Afghanistan. So now we have improved our permanent transit points and we have vaccinated uh, almost all the IDPs. And I think the way we are moving forward, uh, you won't believe that this time in WEF, at least five CEOs of different private sector, they want to invest in Pakistan, in infrastructure, in logistic management, in equipment, and I think you will feel the difference in another few years. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. So there's reason for, for optimism there. Um, do we have other questions from the floor at this point? In which case, I would like to follow up with another question. Um, Pakistan is a young country in the sense that it has a very young population. Um, the forum works with the Global Shapers, our community of under 30 years old. Uh, we have very good engagement from Pakistan as well. What's the message you're taking from this annual meeting back to Pakistan, especially to young people in your country? I think, uh, Ali, you can take that question. Certainly. Yeah. Uh, I think on the government's agenda, the most important thing is jobs. And, you know, while having uh, a young population is a blessing, in many cases, we, as, as the government, are responsible for providing them jobs. And um, this administration has a single-minded focus on creating that. So even at WEF, we want young people to know that the government is here finding partnerships that will create large-scale employment. We also want to encourage young people. Um, we want to encourage them to participate in the shapers, as YGLs, as other communities of the WEF and many other communities around the world to globalize ourselves. So I think those are the two messages I would, I would give to young people. Thank you very much. Do we have any other questions from the floor? No, not at this point. Do you want to add to the um, aspect? All I would say is that in this world of disruptive technologies, Technology is the tool to take forward uh, and provide the employment opportunities to the youth. And that's what we are very focused on. And um, I would like to just uh, bring it out in the focus that we are adding 1 million 3G, 4G customers every month. And it's a huge figure. Sometimes I think a population of the country is added to the 3G, 4G network every, every month in Pakistan. And large part of it is a young population. And they're using this technology as enablement for uh, earning a bread from home. So the freelancing is one of the key things that our government is focusing and providing them uh, an opportunity to earn. Using technology is one of the key drivers, a uh, focus of our government as well, and which is actually happening. We are committed to providing broadband connectivity in every inch of Pakistan to bring in financial inclusion, and also provide job opportunities for pe uh, people where uh, even roads did not exist yesterday. So there's a massive effort underway to provide that. Thank you, Prime Minister. Yes, please. Uh, well, I'm Maria Morinzeb. I would just like to briefly add uh, to the already um, explained narrative from Pakistan that from the perspective of social empowerment and social indicators, uh, in line with sustainable development goals, as 60% of the youth of the country uh, is under the age of 35, and uh, we see youth as means of implementation of uh, sustainable development goals, and also the, uh, there's a priority uh, from the government to engage youth into uh, the uh, de inclusive development that we are implementing in Pakistan at the moment. And also, uh, Pakistan has been fighting uh, war on terror for past 35 years, and we have seen successes in the last four years. So there's also 
uh, a challenge for the youth in the country, uh, which is confronted with the war, uh, perception war uh, also, and how we are actually um, in, uh, reshaping the landscape and the perception about Pakistan across the world, and how we're using uh, media for that matter, and also by regaining and reviving our indigenous narrative and the original narrative by engaging youth into uh, the broadcast industry, into media industry, and also into uh, film industry of Pakistan. Uh, Pakistan. Government of Pakistan will be announcing the first film policy to engage youth uh, into the entertainment and broadcast industry and use them as tools uh, to change the image of Pakistan across the globe. Thank you very much. Um, your health minister already mentioned uh, some uh, some company names, but I'd, I'd like like to uh, ask the, the question in a broader sense because we have 1,500 business leaders here in Davos. What's your message as as Prime Minister of Pakistan to these business leaders mm -hmm. here in Davos and beyond? The message is very simple: uh, Pakistan is open for business. Uh, Pakistan is a huge market; it's a growing market. We have a six percent growth rate, and uh, the business leaders have responded. The automotive sector, the healthcare sector, the energy sector, the IT sector, all are investing in Pakistan and they promise greater investments. I, just want to add that. Please. I, think, uh, I think one thing I would share also is that Pakistan is an incredibly open economy. So if you're the telecom minister is here, uh, I think she can attest to the fact that um, every telecommunications company in Pakistan, every mobile phone carrier is foreign owned or operated. And uh, that sense of openness in terms of sharing the economy is rare. About half of our oil and gas, our upstream oil and gas sector, is also foreign-owned. And the large global multinationals operate in it. I think in the emerging markets, uh, it's hard to find countries that are so open in the economy. And that also, combined with our 200 million person population, uh, gives a great market to foreign companies. And that's a message we'd like th to leave them with. Thank you very much. Minister, I, I, I think you want, want to, to add to that. I just want to say one thing, that in the present world, it's difficult, not only difficult, but impossible for governments alone to go with the challenges, especially in social sector. So private-public partnership is imperative. And I think we are already, uh, I mean, uh, we can see the results of Global Fund and Gavi Alliance. And I think this is a very successful model, which is a product of World Economic Forum. So we welcome, you know, public-private partnership in Pakistan. So anybody who wants to invest in Pakistan in any sector, and I think this is uh, the narrative of the present government also. Thank you very much. Um, Prime Minister, uh, ministers, dear panelists, uh, mindful of the time, uh, if there are no more questions from the floor at this point, I would uh, close this uh, press conference. I would uh, thank my panelists very, very much, uh, both for being here today in the press conference, but also to being so strongly engaged with the World Economic Forum and here at this annual meeting. Thank you very much, and thank you for watching. Thank you.